everyone welcome to mercury stationing direct finally at 25 degrees 54 minutes so we can round that up to 26 degrees if you like in the sign of libra mercury stationed retrograde at 11 degrees scorpio on october 14th and we are direct mercury is officially direct hallelujah however it will be a little bit of a while before we're totally and completely out of the woods. November 10th is a significant day. Mercury is at his maximum elongation, so he'll begin to kind of just speed up more. He will really be at a standstill this entire week. And when Mercury stations, either retrograde or direct, the energy really is heightened. So the ideas and the realizations will be coming, but it may not be the very best time to act on it. And especially in this one, we're in this full moon in Taurus conjunct Uranus. So like the revelations, the brilliance and the changes, lightning bolts are being thrown, but I would really hold off until the beautiful new moon in Scorpio. It's, it's very, very soon, so I would just hold on a little bit longer. Um, so November 19th is when we are out of the shadow. However, I like to wait until Mercury is completely out of the sign. And in this case, it's December 1st when Mercury will leave Scorpio. So, hey guys, welcome to my Mercury in Direct video. There's going to be 10 minutes here on YouTube and then I'm going to take the party over to Patreon and we're going to go through all 12 signs and what it means for all 12 signs. So make sure you check that out. It's better to do it at the beginning of the month because and I'm just going to give this heads up like all over the place now. Patreon charges you guys at the first of every month, not 30 days from when you sign up. So if you guys are looking at the Patreon and you guys any month you're thinking about hopping on, I really recommend hopping on in the beginning of the month. So anywho, it's going to be in the Knights tier tier two and let's go ahead and get started a little bit. So Mercury going retrograde. This is like a zigzag in the sky from our perspective here on Earth. So Mercury is Mercury really turning it? No, he's really not. It's just from Earth, Mercury is going to be doing this zigzag above and below the ecliptic in this part of the zodiac. And in this case, it's it's Libra and Scorpio. And this is interesting because in 2019, Mercury retrograded in Scorpio. Now, that was different. That was different for a couple of reasons. Mercury went backwards in Scorpio and then went forwards again in Scorpio. And that particular, I have my notes here for the dates. Okay, October 3rd, Mercury entered Scorpio retrograded October 31st at 27 degrees of Scorpio, went direct November 20th at 11 degrees of Scorpio and didn't leave Scorpio until December 9th. So that was 2019 and that one was really special because in that particular cycle, Mercury retrogrades like three or four times a year. So it's, you know, but what happened in 2019 was that Mercury crossed right through like the heart of the sun and astrologers call that a transit, like a big transit of Mercury. That hadn't happened since November 8th, 2006. And it happens, I think 12 or 13 times in a century. So wherever those, the, like this area of your life, the Scorpio area of your life, and I'll get into it in the, when I break it down for each of the 12 signs, this is like you have this chance to zoom in. I mean, quite literally get to the heart of some matter, get to the heart of what your soul is trying to understand about your own emotional truth. Scorpio rules emotional truth, rules conviction, rules authenticity. And, you know, Scorpio, Pluto, the death card and the tarot, it's, it's like this penetrating clarity that doesn't let anyone or anything off the hook just because it's difficult. So yes, it's good for us because there's inner epiphanies and there's realizations. And in 2020, what's going on right now, I really feel is, is picking up the torch from 2019 and, you know, going back and beyond. But in this particular retrograde phase, we have so many other things going on. And, you know, 
we're in this energy of the Jupiter Pluto conjunction, which goes exact on November 12th next week. So there's there's so much sea change and so much that's the third and last conjunction it will never happen again in our lifetimes it's just very very epic things that are happening now haven't happened since since the reformation i mean really taking it far back so in your personal life whatever this is showing you whatever the scorpio area of your life is showing you it is you having this unflinching unflinchingly honest perspective on it and that's why you know mercury retrograding it's funny because it is from our perspective here on earth that these things are that this retrograde is like happening you know so it, it it's a it's a great you know analogy for what we can expect so anyway so with mercury stationing direct Mercury is at a standstill, so things are coming up and becoming more clear, but it's not quite yet the best time to act or arrive at like definite conclusions. Like you're getting more information, but I would I would still hold off on moving forward with communications, especially this week in particular in 2020, because we have we're in this like Mercury square Saturn energy, and it's it's just like critical and harsh and there's a lot coming down. So I would I would give it a little I would give it till after November 14th for things to for to give and, and then if you really want to wait wait for the 19th wait for December 1st. It depends on what you're trying to plan out. But whatever is being unearthed. Secrets, financial information, financial esoterica, sexual intimacies. Um any kind of intimacies. I mean, finances, anything that you're sharing with another human being, you can only meet someone as deeply as they met themselves. You've heard that before. And this Scorpio energy is showing you in some area of your life where you are trying to share, where you're trying to be known, be understood. Now, Scorpio is a very complex, complicated sign that has like three different icons. There's a scorpion, there's the eagle, there's the phoenix. So depending on like what stage you're in in that Scorpio area of your life and what little animal you're channeling will determine how successfully you can do that. Share intimately is what I'm talking about. So it can be financial for some of you. It can be love and romantic for some of you. It can be um, in your career, it can be what you put out into the world. It can be how you share in your home life. I mean, I get into that in the Patreon. But with Scorpio, the reason why it gets complex and the reason why that area of our lives is where we can revert to the Scorpion, super defensive and trying to sting and be really self-protective is, bec is because Scorpio understands the depth because Scorpio understands deeper currents happening underneath the superficial surface. Now what Scorpio does with that information, it can make them very cynical. It can make them bitter. It can make them not trust anybody, paranoid. And it doesn't mean that they're totally wrong. It just makes them have that outlook. It has gives them that attitude. What they're supposed to do is take that and soar above it all like the eagle. And that's why Scorpio is the one that has the power to transform. Why would, for instance, and I know nothing against any other fire signs or air signs, but like Gemini. Why would you give Gemini the power, some deep esoteric power to transform a situation? Gemini is not looking that deep. Gemini just wants to butterfly flower to flower and spread the pollen whatever no you in order to transform you have to understand like the root you have to be able to dig in to the the infection in the root canal okay who wants to do that <laughs> nobody wants to do that Scorpio it's like I'll take out that trash I mean he loves that but then you got to then you're responsible for clearing it all out, taking it all out, putting, you know, getting it nice and clean so there's nothing toxic in down in there anymore and some root canals, some roots, some people's roots curve. 
So it's not even like a tooth that goes like, okay, it's easy to just go this and clean it out. Some people's freaking teeth curve. So then your instrument has to go and like, you know, yeah, I just did that. And so I feel like Scorpio likes that kind of thing. So the deeper it is or the more complicated it is, it's like you really got to make sure that it's clean. Then when it's all nice and irritated because you've been scratching and scraping and cleaning and, you know, aciding it all up, then you have to pack it with medication. You have to pack it with medicine, healing, healing love and affection and, you know, positivity, high vibrational stuff. And then you close it all up. <laughs> you seal it all up. You put a little cap on it, you know, and then you let it just chill and let it heal. Give it time. Give it time for the medicine, and, you know, all that stuff to happen. So now that I just grossed everybody out of here, um, that's really what <laughs> Mercury going direct at in Libra is doing. Libra is going to be like the medicine. So Mercury and Scorpio was the digging and the removing of the toxins and now that Mercury's in Libra, direct, going up against Saturn, that's taking that medicine, that's taking that bitter, you know, it's good for you, it'll heal you up, but it tastes horrible, and you have to do the responsible thing, and it like kills you to do the responsible, mature thing, but you know it's good for you, so you just gulp it down, you do it. That's what, that's what this week kind of is. That's what Mercury stationing direct that's the vibe, is that burst bubbles, maybe even burst dreams. But <laughs> when the rose-colored glasses come off, it's empowering because now you know, and now you know what to change, you know what's not working, you know what to do. And you've got to take the responsibility for your own life to do it. And with Mercury and Libra, you know, Mercury's, it, 